We're here at Ascot Racecourse for the latest edition of Access All Areas Explores. Horse racing has been staged here since 1711, when it was introduced under the jurisdiction of Queen Anne. It's become synonymous with Royal Ascot, of course, but this beautiful historic venue has so much more to offer than equestrian endeavours. My name's Felicity Barnard. I'm the commercial director here at Ascot Racecourse. I've been here for just over two years and I'm responsible for driving as much revenue as I can into the racecourse from all different types of revenue lines, be it sponsorship, media, uh, hospitality, uh, and lots of different growth areas as well. So looking to expand the brand um, and, work, and work within the sport itself. I'm Rob Padden. I'm head of sales at Ascot Racecourse. Uh, my areas of responsibility are including fine dining, ticketing, and our events at Ascot Business, which we're going to talk about today. I'm Paul Pice as Oakwell, and I'm the general manager for 1711 by Ascot. 1711 is an important number for us. It's the year the racecourse was founded by Queen Anne. And that's the name we've used in our joint venture, which is between uh, Sodexo, Live, and Ascot Racecourse. Obviously, this beautiful venue is synonymous with Royal Ascot and horse racing. But for 90% of the year, it's used for all sorts of events, a huge variety of um, events from different sizes and scales. Can you um, talk me through some of those key focuses for you? Sure. And you're right. Royal Ascot is absolutely the jewel in the crown of here at, at, at Ascot. But Ascot is a global lifestyle brand, which is, as you say, wrapped around um, world-class racing. So we have 26 uh, race days a year, uh, five of which are um, Royal Ascot. And so lots of racing that happens you know, e e each month, whether it's on, on the flat or on the jumps. But thereafter, you're right, we are a uh, multi-hundred-acre site where we have lots of things going on, be it conferences, weddings, uh, meetings, but also we open ourselves up to the community, which is really important. So we really are at the heart of the Ascot community and have people enjoying the site through the heath, walking their dogs with their children every day, which is very important to us as well. Absolutely. In terms of the outside space, apart from for the horse racing, what, what kind of flexibility do you have for things like live music and some festivals, that kind of event? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. So there is some flexibility. Um, you know, in the statute that we have here as a business, we are all about racing. So everything we do is for the good of racing. So we need to make sure that we protect that because it's absolutely at our core. But saying that, we do work with a lot of commercial partners and, and community partners to really open the space up to people within the community and beyond. So we have had concerts here. We often have music outside of racing, um, at the end of racing, to encourage more and a more diverse amount of people to come. So yes, we do have lots of different things that, that happen each year. Yeah, so, so one that springs to mind immediately for me is, is the ERP Award. So that is um, a more sort of traditional awards um, style event in the tech sector. Um, but also uh, brings out a sort of festival vibe that uh, sort of comes onto a lot of our big spaces that we have here. So, and it's also in partnership with the NHS. So it's a real sort of um, mix of industries coming together, which obviously has that awards piece to it, but also just this incredible festival vibe that our site can deliver because it is so vast. So whether it's temporary structures, um, whether it's bringing in um, carousels and Ferris wheels to team building pop-up events well, we really have because we have the space we have the space and we have the flexibility to deliver that so that's an event that springs to mind that sort of ticks so many boxes when it comes to events that we have here and have you seen any sort of trends in terms of um, or, or is there a specific focus on encouraging a, a, a certain type of event into this building whether it be exhibitions or conferences or that kind of thing yeah absolutely i think post-covid all businesses uh, whether you're a race course or, or other need to diversify and need to look at what their business business can provide um, to this new audience. So yes, we absolutely do. We do have a fantastic set of facilities, be it for parties or conferences, or as you've said, for exhibitions, we have fantastic year on year bookers, um, you know, our kind of our car auction that comes every year, brings in people from all over the world. And so it's really important that we do that, not only to allow people to see what we do here, but but just experience Ascot as a brand um, and perhaps encourage them to come racing as well as come for those events. And if I was a outdoor event promoter coming to, to you looking for options, what spaces are available? What would you recommend uh, in terms of the areas that would be ideal for, um, say, live music or live comedy or something of that nature? I guess it would depend on the size of the event, as we spoke about the scale of scalability that, that we have here. So um, there's plenty of lawn spaces. If it's something that offers significant, you know, thousands of people, the pavilion can have a thousand people if it has to be inside. Uh, we also are not afraid of building temporary structures, which we do at Royal Ascot. So again, we can really scale and build accordingly. 
And for those sort of events, AV is really, really important. You know, it's one of the key drivers here. And we have, um, we have an in-house AV support that, again, can build the bespoke AV you need, whether it's a simple presentation that you just want to um, project to the room, whether it be actually a full-scale AV setup, we have that scalability as well. And obviously, it's a beautiful venue that's steeped in history. And how do you kind of bring that essence of... Um, you know, the brand, I guess, to, to all nature of events. Yes, it's it's difficult. So, yeah, we're 300 years old. And so that's a very big ship to to move even slightly into a different direction. And so the way to do it is by um, evolution, not revolution. So, you know, we make sure that we are true to our brand um, and we are custodians of, of as I said, you know, racing and, and ask it. And the way to do it really is to look at how we can encourage those 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 bookers, those 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 guests that may be aligned with us. So particularly on the brand side, you know, finding people that want to hold their events and exhibitions here, or even to partner with us that have similar um, similar objectives and similar kind of key key themes as well. So it, it's about working with the right partners, moving delicately into the right direction, but also opening ourselves up to to a bigger audience. It's a, a huge and a hugely flexible space when it comes to uh, holding events. Um, can you give me some example of uh, how that's managed? I mean, obviously, um, Royal Ascot is a vast, vast event of, it accommodates 270,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, so how, does, how, is, how vast is the operation? I mean, how, how big is the team? This box is, is a good example of the flexibility and the diversity of what we do here at Ascot. We're in the Moat and Shandon box, one of our sponsors at Ascot, and we have many sponsors, so they're one key stakeholder we need to look after. But all our, all our guests are equally important to us, whether they're in the Windsor enclosure on an entry ticket, just bringing their own picnic, even including the Royal Box. We have to make sure they're all looked after and have those memorable experiences. And it's my team, me and my team's responsibility to do that. At Royal Ascot this year, we had over 340 chefs on site daily, uh, and, and they were prepping for a week before we actually got to the main event, making you know, bespoke desserts, starters, and, and preparing all the vegetables. I think we had 30,000 carrots that needed to be peeled and, and prepared, um, I believe it or believe it not. And then all of that, it, you know, it takes a lot, a, a lot of people. And totally, I had around 3,600 staff uh, at, at Royal Ascot per day. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, the uh, everyone's eye in the event industry is quite rightly on, on being as sustainable and environmentally efficient as possible. When it comes to your food offering, I understand that you work very closely with uh, the local farm. So, yes, Tom Morphew. Uh, we work with him at Full Circle Farms, and that's a great story for us. And we love working with Tom, and he's very passionate uh, in what he does. And what he does, he provides us fresh fruit and vegetables uh, throughout the year, very seasonal fresh fruit and vegetables. And we use that in a couple of our restaurants. And for us, that's that's a great story to share with our guests that we are we are growing stuff direct rather than importing it from around the world. We have 26 race days, but every day in each race day is different, but each other day is different. And working with our conference and events business and, and those inquiries that come in and everyone wanting to have something different, it's not just handing out the same menu pack, but rather bespoking it and then having that uh, chance to, to show off what we do here. We've reached the end of our time here at Ascot Racecourse, a surprisingly versatile facility that actually stretches over one mile and is home to 300 individual event venues. 